Okay, let's go ahead and solve this triangle problem using the law of signs. So if you understand what the law of signs is, it's a basic formula. You could definitely look this up on the internet right now. And if you um, have that formula and a calculator, you should be able to solve this triangle problem. Even if you've never heard of the law of signs, because it's a pretty straightforward formula. But let's go ahead and take a look at this triangle problem. You can see here we have all the angles of the triangle, but we only have one length. Okay, we know the side of this triangle is 27. So we want to solve this triangle problem, which means that we want to know all the sides and all the angles. We have all the angles, we have this side, but we don't know what sides A and C are. So this is a problem for the law of signs. Now, if you're interested in this um, a particular video, if you're like, oh, law of signs, I'm studying for that. Well, that means that you are taking trigonometry, which is an awesome course. But I can tell you right now, uh, most of you will be taking trigonometry or like kind of higher level, more advanced level trigonometry as part of a course like, say, pre-calculus. It used to be years ago that trigonometry was kind of like a standalone uh, semester course. Some colleges and schools still offer trigonometry that way, but it's far more common to be taking tri trigonometry as part of a course like pre-calculus or like advanced algebra, uh, something along those lines. But anyways, if you're in any one of those courses, you're absolutely going to have to understand the law of signs. So if you think you could do this problem, and I think you can do this uh, problem, uh, go ahead and put your answers into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one moment, and we're going to be talking about how to solve triangle problems uh, at a little bit more advanced level where you need things like the law of sines, and there's actually another law called the law of cosines. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second as well. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I can tell you right now, I absolutely love teaching math. I've been, so I've been teaching math more than just a few years, but I've been teaching math for decades. You can't do anything for decades unless you actually, <laughs> unless you have a, a real passion for it. And I can tell you right now, you know, students can be successful in mathematics. All students can be successful in math, not just those students that math comes easy to. So if you are failing math right now, or if you're struggling math, or if you hate math, if you failed math before in the past, you can be very successful in mathematics, far more than you probably believe right now, okay? But what you need is the desire to learn math, okay? So if you don't want to learn math, you're not going to learn it. So you, you got to want to learn math. The second thing you need is some encouragement. Hopefully you have an excellent math teacher right now. But the final and most important thing you need is great math instruction. Math instruction you actually understand, clear and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe you're studying for some sort of really special, important exam in your life, something like the SAT, ACT, GED, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, something that's going to have a lot of... Um, importance for you getting into college or placing into a particular program. These tests, you know, are very, very important. Anyways, I have a large library of test prep courses. Or if you homeschool mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over a hundred plus different math courses that span all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description as well, because far too many students, unfortunately, uh, don't take notes, or when they do take notes, they're very sloppy. Like I used to take notes back in high school. I would just write some stuff down, and then I would look at my notes, and I'd be like, what did I write down? I have no idea. So note-taking like that is very ineffective. The better you are at note-taking, the better everything will go, not just in math, but any academic um, uh, topic that you are studying. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this problem. So here is our triangle. Of course, we were given all the angles of the uh, triangle, and we were given this side right here, B. So side A would be 44, approximately 44.06, and side C it would be approximately 56.25. Now remember, here is angle B on this vertice right here. So opposite of angle B is length B, okay? So opposite of angle C, is length C, and then opposite of angle A uh, is length A. So that's how you read these triangles. But uh, in trigonometry, 
you're going to be doing a lot of problems that are basically solve the triangle. And what um, your teacher or what the question is asking is, hey, give me all the angles of the triangle and all the sides. That's what it means to solve a triangle. So in order to solve a triangle, well, this you know, could be fairly complex um, when the triangles are not right triangles. So up to this point, uh, most of you hopefully have worked with right triangles before. So we have A here, B here, C there. So when we're working with right triangles, you can use something called the Pythagorean theorem, which is totally awesome. And you can use basic uh, right triangle trigonometry, all that kind of good stuff. So uh, Katoa, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but this is based what we call basic trigonometric ratio, sine, cosine, and tangent. And uh, again, uh, this is when we're talking about right triangles. So this is kind of introduced at like the high school level uh, geometry course. But these kind of problems are much more difficult because when we're dealing with non right uh, triangle, um, non right triangle problems, okay, and this causes a whole nother different scenario. And this can be quite sophisticated. And it's going to be um, uh, basically beyond the scope of this video to talk about all the issues you need to consider uh, when you're solving non right triangle uh, problems. Okay, but I can tell you right now, here's some of the tools that you're going to need to know, you're going to need to know, know here, let's put it this way, the law of sines, and you're going to need to know the law of cosines. Okay, a law of sines, law of cosines, and you're also going to need to understand uh, basic different uh, different types of triangles. So you have triangles that you have the side 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 information, or you have an angle side angle. There's all different types of different uh, setups that you're going to have to know to include something called the ambiguous case which, you know, the, these problems require quite a bit of work. So we're not going to go down that path. If you're studying that, let me give you a suggestion. You definitely want to check out my pre-calculus course with my full trigonometry component. I get into all of that. So really, really at a detailed, comprehensive level. But just kind of a heads up here, we're going to be using the law of signs uh, kind of in a simple uh, case here, just to kind of illustrate the law of signs. But you're going to need to know these other things as well to really master non-right triangle situations. But let's get again. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the law of signs right now. Okay, so the law of signs is the following. So you can see I have the formula right here. But let's just take a look at a reference triangle. So again. We have these larger letters, A, B, and C. A, this is the angle A, okay, so that's what we're talking about. This is angle C, and this is angle B. Now, opposite of angle B is side B. Opposite of angle uh, A would be side A, and then opposite of angle C would be side C. So you have to um, kind of know how to read these triangles. But here is the law of signs, and this is basically what it says. So it says, um, if we have the length of A, okay, on this particular triangle right here, so A over sine of A, which would be the sine of this right there, is equal to, um, this This is just basically a ratio, so it could be equal to B, okay, this length right here, over sine B, and that is also going to be equal to C, over sine c. Now the great thing about the law of sines is you're not going to use all three of these. So you're going to uh, select what information you're going to have. So you can uh, compare sine. Um, uh, you, uh, if you have information for a and sine a, you can uh, set that equal to c over sine c or b uh, and uh, b and c lengths right here. You can also do this this way. So there's any number of different combinations you can use this. You're not going to use these all three at once. You're going to pick two at a time and solve for a particular variable. So this will probably make better sense when we actually see uh, the law of sines uh, in action. Let's go ahead and take a look at this now, just in case you might be a little bit confused by my explanation. So sometimes it's just best to kind of see something in action uh, to uh, really understand it. Okay, so here is our triangle. So this is the problem given to us. So we wanna solve for A and C. So let's go ahead and figure out uh, what A is. Let's find A. 
So in this problem, we have to look at what uh, was given to us. What do we have? Well, we have, we're looking for a side, an uh, angle and its respective sides. So we know B, um, angle B, and we know side B. So that's what we're going to have to use. So we have this part of uh, the law of sine. So this we have, all right? We have B and sine B I can get because that's 28 degrees. So now if I want to find A, well, let's go ahead and um, uh, have uh, a uh, proportion set up where A is involved. So A over sine A. Now, do I have um, A's um, angle? I do. Okay. So here, if you take a look at I have, um, I can, or I can calculate the sine of A because A is 50 degrees. I know what B is. B is 27. And I can calculate the sine of B because I have that angle, which is 28 degrees. And you can see the setup right here. So what you want to do when you're using a law of signs is to identify uh, in the triangle what um, given information you have to have a complete um, uh, fraction, i.e. you have both the numerator and denominator, an A and an A, an A and a sine A, or a B and a sine B. So here we have B and a sine B. So that's what we have. And now I could easily have started this problem by looking for C, but we'll start by uh, looking for A. And notice here, this is a nice little proportion. The only thing that I'm missing, I have sine of A, which is again, sine of 50. I have uh, B, okay, which is 27. I have sine of B, which is uh, sine of 28. So the only thing I need to solve for is A. So I have one unknown, and this is basically the setup. So let's go ahead and just use some basic algebra to solve for A. And how are we going to do that? We're simply going to use the cross product. Remember, this is a proportion. So we can simply cross multiply. If you don't understand proportions, well, and you're at this level of math, then you definitely need to uh, do some review. But basically, to solve for A, I can simply cross multiply. All right, so it's going to use a cross product here. To solve for A, so it's going to be A times sine of 28 degrees. We'll write that there, right? So A times sine of, 20, sine of 28 degrees. We'll write that there. And then 27 times sine of 50 degrees. We'll write that right there. Now, let me give you a little bit of a tip here. Um, do not start um, calculating out the sine of uh, 28 degrees, sine of 50 degrees. Don't do that yet on your calculator. You want to use your calculator at the very end. All right, do all the algebra first, and then you can use your calculator to actually compute the answer. All right, so um, you do have to be aware though that the sine of 28 degrees and the sine of 50 degrees, are just these are just numbers that we can get decimal values on our calculator. So here to solve for A, okay, and that's what I wanna do, I simply just have to divide both sides of the equation by sine of 28 degrees. So you're gonna end up with this, A is equal to 27 uh, times sine of 50 degrees divided by sine of 28 degrees. Now we go ahead and get our calculator and we do all this number crunching. And if you do this correctly, you're gonna get A is equal to 44.06. Now, the one thing you need to be aware of when you're using your calculator is there's two modes. You have a degree mode and a radian mode, okay? Because our angles are given to us in degrees, you got to make sure your, your calculator is in degrees. And uh, trigonometry students are famous for working, obviously, you're, you're working both in degrees and radian modes. So when a student works in radians, they forget to switch back to degrees and they do a problem and get the uh, wrong answer. They do everything right, but their calculator is in the wrong mode. So if you're taking trigonometry, you have to be very aware before you start doing anything with your calculator to check to see, hey, it's in the uh, correct mode. In this case, it needs to be in the degree mode. All right, so that's how you, uh, you basically solve for that side A. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at what we have now. So we have this side, we have this side now, so A is approximately 44.06 because we're dealing with uh, trigonometric uh, values. There are large decimals. Uh, you know, this is going to be an approximation. So now how do we get uh, C? Well, you have all different sorts of options. I'm going to use uh, B's information, and then we'll use C's information. We'll set up with the law of, of uh, signs, right? So we have the angle for C, we're looking for C, and we were given B's uh, information. I'm using B because B is given to me as 27. I don't wanna use an approximation, so I'll use something a little bit more accurate. And then we will be done, but let's go ahead and do this work right now. 
All right, so let's find C again. We're going to use the law of sine. So C over sine C is equal to B um, right there, B over sine B. All right, so this is how we use the law of sines. Any two uh, angles and sides, you can compare A, B, C. doesn't make a difference. So let's go ahead and do the setup right now, right here. Okay, so C over sine of C, which is 102 degrees, is going to be equal to B, which is 27, over sine of angle B, which is 28 degrees. And again, we're going to use the cross product to solve for C exactly as we did with uh, uh, side A. So again, don't do any computing until you finish with the algebra. So we're going to go to uh, do the cross product. So C times sine of 28 degrees is going to be C sine 28 degrees is equal to 27 times sine of 102. So make sure this 27 is in front of the sine 102. When you're multiplying, you're not putting the 27 at the end of it, right? You want to put it at the uh, beginning of it because this right here is something you're going to have to compute in your calculator. Then you'll multiply that by 27. So to solve for C, we're going to take this whole thing and divide it by sine of 28. You could just follow the simple algebra right here. And then we'll get our calculator out in degree of mode. We'll do all this number crunching and you're going to get C is approximately 56.25. So the final answer would be this. This is the complete um, solution to this triangle. So we have all sides of the triangle and of course, we were given all the angles of the triangles uh, originally. But this is what it means to solve a triangle. And again, this is uh, an illustration of how we can use the law of sines. But you're going to have to use the law of sines uh, for a lot of problems, the law of cosines. And you're going to have to understand you know, how you use these in various scenarios. This can get fairly complicated. So if you're like, oh, I totally get the law of sines, that's excellent. It's a good place. But you need to understand the law. Whoops, I put the law of sines twice, the law of cosines. Okay, you're going to have to understand uh, both of these laws separately. Okay, and then how to work, how to um, solve them uh, together, right? Because oftentimes you're going to have to use both of these laws together to solve a triangle uh, uh, problem in more advanced trigonometry. So, again, if you are studying this and you need additional help, Definitely check out my uh, pre-calculus course because I get really, really, really uh, uh, in uh, thorough detail in how to solve these type of situations and trigonometry. But hey, maybe you're just new to the law of signs and you found this interesting. Like, hey, you know what? I kind of understand that. And that's excellent. OK, you, you know, we don't have to make this overly complex because, you know, uh, you have the basic sense of what the law of science is and how we can use it to solve triangle problems. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.